Good evening. We will call this meeting of the Rowan Salisbury Board of Education to order. Uh, and first, I'll ask Mr. Hughes if he would to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would please join us in a moment of silence and as always there are a multitude of things that we can uh, that we can think of obviously we want to uh, keep our staff and our students and parents uh, in our thoughts and prayers at all times for their safety uh, we're coming to a point now where the school year is is slowly but surely wrapping up and that's an exciting time for everybody but also that leads us into summer and traveling those sorts of things so if you would just remember that and join us in a moment of silence please Thank you. And before we move on to the agenda, there are a couple things I want to mention as far as housekeeping. <clears throat> For those of you who are not aware, we, uh, the board has approved um, the use of videotaping um, equipment, and that has been purchased. And um, thanks to our, our wonderful staff, that has been put in place. And so tonight we have our uh, video camera, we have new speakers, and we have microphones. So the meetings will now be videotaped. Uh, and those will also be posted online you can search those uh, and also from this point on all of our work sessions will also be held here as opposed to Ella Street that way we can continue to videotape those um, so with that in mind I would mention this is mostly for the board um, obviously we have new microphones so keep that in mind when you're speaking um, also try to limit if you can your consumption of food during this since it is being videotaped and we have the new microphones uh, we'll try to limit that during open session obviously drinks are fine um, also, we want to make sure that during conversations and during uh, comments that you speak when acknowledged, and please make sure that we speak clearly into the microphone and let's not interrupt one another. Make sure everyone is, is finished with their comments and the next person is acknowledged before you speak. <coughs> Uh, and the last thing I'll mention, and we do have a slide on this, but again, this goes for everybody. If you would, please remember if you would silence your cell phones or iPads, anything like that, just so that's not an added uh, interruption or distraction during the meeting, we would greatly appreciate that. So with that behind us, <clears throat> we will move on and um, we will adopt the agenda. Is there a motion to do that? Mr. Chairman, there's one article that I'd like to pull out of the consent agenda. Okay, what would that be? I, I, let me correct that. I don't think that we need to uh, pull it out. I'd just like confirmation that proposal policy 7950, there was a small uh, change uh, that we voted on in the uh, work session. It had not been in a place in the uh, uh, policy for, for second reading. I was told it was. I just want to confirm that. Okay, and I don't think, and let me ask April, I think you said you're in the process that will be changed, correct? Or has it already Okay, and she spoke to me about that. She said it will be changed. She has made note of that, so that will be corrected. Yeah, thank you very much. No need to pull okay. that, sir. Anything I have else? an addition to the agenda. Okay, Dr. Miller. Like um, under the closed session, I have a security personnel issue. Okay, so that's not a problem. We'll add that under executive session. Any other additions or deletions? If not, is there a motion to accept the adopt the agenda? I make a motion we adopt the agenda as presented. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? Okay, we have adopted the agenda. And next we will move on. We'll turn it over to Dr. Moody for celebrations.
And next we have communications to the board, but there are none, so we will move on to Dr. Moody's uh, comments to the board. Good evening. Uh, just a kind of a couple announcements to remind you about. We are really excited about Thursday night, and we hope that you'll all be there and bring a friend with you. Uh, we will be having our guest lecturer, Dr. Mark Edwards, who will be at Livingstone College in the auditorium there. We've invited all of our teachers with, or not teachers, all of our staff with 25 years of experience or more and then five to um, eight teachers from every school and some leadership to hear Dr. Edwards speak about thank you for your leadership. And this is an appreciation for the work that they do and lead us at every level. Um, you may know that Dr. Edwards was the National Superintendent of the Year, which is quite a coup for North Carolina to have a national superintendent. Um, he speaks on the circuit in most of the um, national conferences that I attend, they pay him big bucks to do it, and he's going to do it because he's right next door to us. I don't even think we know how rich our resources are. So it would be an honor and privilege. I consider him to be a good friend. Um, his second book has been released. It's called Thank You for Your Leadership, and we'll be giving that to uh, our teacher leaders and the folks that have been leading our district for more than 25 years. So it begins with the book signing at 4 o'clock. We hope you'll be there for the book signing the reception. And then Leon Pridgen, former school board member, will be bringing comments and Discovery Education is sponsoring him. And then Dr. Mark Edwards, and we'll be out of there by 6 o'clock. So we hope that you will join us at Livingstone, and we appreciate them hosting us. Livingstone College, Catawba College, and uh, Rowan Cabarrus Community College will have their departments of education will also be joining us. So it's a joint adventure. So we're looking forward to Thursday evening. Um, week Beginning next week is spring break. I think everybody knows that. And during spring break, I just remind you that we will have a skeleton crew or less. So the buildings will be closed mostly. Uh, people will be allowed to work, but we won't really be open for the public during spring break because we just don't have enough employees here that, that won't be on vacation during that period of time. And then um, last but certainly not least, before our next business meeting, we will have our advanced ed certification coming up. So our guests will be coming in on the evening of um, April the 12th. And so that'll be a very busy week for board members and staff alike. And we're certainly hoping that we get our advanced ed certification. We've worked hard and just kind of a shout out to Alicia Burnett, who's been the person who has put it all together for us and, and really read, rode hard on us to be sure that we all stayed in line and got all our documentation in. And it's been a huge project. So just wanted to thank them. Thank you, Dr. Moody. Next, we will uh, look at consideration of the consent agenda. Are there any changes, anything to be pulled off of there before we move forward? Chuck, I assume you're okay with what we discussed before of April. Yes, that, that answered my question. Thank okay. you, sir. Anything else to be pulled off of the consent agenda for discussion? If not, we'll entertain a motion to accept uh, or adopt the consent agenda. Move the adoption of the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Any opposed? Having none, we have adopted that. And next we will move on. We'll turn it over to Mr. Smith for a, another brief update on thought exchange. Good evening. i um, here to talk to you today about Thought Exchange. We had talked at our board um, work session about using Thought Exchange as a survey tool that is a little bit different from uh, survey tools we've seen in the past, and that it does allow for crowd resourcing of information and then an exchange of that information uh, in the end. So I didn't know if anybody had any questions. I think we were basically looking for a vote today for Thought Exchange. I do have. Um, on speed dial, a rep if we'd like to talk with them. We'll open up for discussion. We've obviously looked at this a little bit and then it's been in the packet for a little bit. So are there any specific questions, comments? Um, any thoughts? Travis. Is the um, 120,000, is that for three years, six surveys? 
not 120,000 each year? That's correct, yes, it's for a full three years. Chuck. If my math is right, uh, that's two questions a year at $20,000 a question, is that correct? Sounds right to me. 120 times three, or three into 120, yeah, if you break it down that way. The contract says two, contra two per year, so that is correct. If we were doing state surveys, I might look at this differently, but for Rowan County, that seems like a, a lot of dollars to ask the question. I'm not sure we have any questions that uh, we need answering at $20,000 a question. Dr. Moody? I just kind of want to remind you all, and, and it, certainly it's up to the board, it's really not a survey. So it is a question that you're asking for their thoughts and interaction on, but it's a, it's a very interactive process of getting people to talk who wouldn't typically come to a board meeting or talk. So we just presented the tool to you all because you said that you wanted to have some dialogue with the community and they don't come to a board meeting or they don't watch the board meeting or it's difficult to have a conversation with the community. So this is very interactive. They stay on this site. They don't just check yes, no, you know, like a survey would. So they like, and then they go back, and it, it, it's a long process. It's not just a small process. So um, again, I'm not advocating for it or against it. it. We just wanted to bring it to you as an option, but um, it is very intense process. Any of the comments, Travis? Dr. Moody, is there um, any interest in the school system, this is new, not on there, of, of having um, town hall forums type meetings in local fire departments or local elementary schools that would be open to the public as a means of getting input from them? Uh, I feel that if someone has such a pressing question, a pressing need, they, they'll contact us by phone or email or come to a meeting or come to a town hall. But it may be beneficial for us to get out into the community as people more also certainly I don't think it's an exclusive thing you know it's not one or the other it's probably both um, we don't have much luck or I've never had much luck with town hall meetings that people show up any more than they do to a school board meeting they just they don't even show up for our legislators um, you know there'll be a handful and it'll be the same crowd every time I think what's unique about this tool and of course you know I'll be the first one to admit this tool is a new tool so I don't know how successful it is so uh, there's a little bit of risk involved, but what's unique about it is they're not coming to us with their issues more like a town hall meeting. We're pushing out a question to them. So we would be pushing out a conversation about what do you think about the length of the school day or what do you think about where our next elementary school ought to be or what, what, what do you feel about school security is the most important thing for children. So we'd be pushing out a dialogue instead of them coming to us. So that makes it a little different. Susan. So we would be able to use this for staff and teachers asking questions of them too exclusively if we wanted to use it that way one time or two times. Well, I don't, I don't think that was just because of the sheer numbers. I mean, you could do that. I think the overall thought was if we used it would be uh, more something system-wide, so like uh, modifying school days, things like that, budget questions. So I don't think we would probably want to isolate it just to staff on this level just because of the cost, but again, that would be a board decision as well. And don't forget there are two proposals. There's a proposal for the three-year contract and then that smaller proposal, which would allow us to see just one engagement. Um, and if we did decide to go with that and we were pleased with the outcome, we could they would then redo the contract, subtract that money um, like we had gone with the full contract. Dr. Miller. Just, uh, I've heard several, 120 mentioned several times, but as I look at the numbers, their modified prices for a three-year thing is 150. Am I reading that correctly? You're correct. Okay. So that it's it's and if we pay it all at one time or early, it's 135. So that's that's the three-year package figure as I read the data you have in front of us. Yes, that's correct. So there's a discount if we move with it now. And the one time is the 19,000 right at 20,000 figure. Just to make sure I'm understanding the 
the data properly. That's correct. Oh, second question. Go ahead. And we're proposing, what's your proposal for the funding source? It would have to be covered out of uh, probably operational fund balance because it's not budgeted at this point. So it would be additional. Thank you. Travis, you have a question? Or another comment? Oh, okay. <laughs> Dr. Moody? As we've talked about it, I would just tell you that I don't see any advantage in entering a three-year contract. If you were going to, um, if you'd like to try this, I'd do the one-time engagement and then assess and decide whether you wanted to go further or not and see if it did everything and then some <laughs> that you wanted it to do. And if it didn't, you certainly wouldn't have any obligation. Uh, I didn't really find any advantage to going three years, especially since it's new on the market. Any other comments or questions? Travis? And the, the general fund balance is also balances that we, we could use for um, uh, other classroom issues. Also, the operational fund balance. Right. Operational, yes. that could that could put new t more teachers in the classrooms. Well, no, no not, it, there are certain things you can do with that, but you can't necessarily just hire a teacher with it, depending on what they're coded to and that sort of thing. So it's capital needs, just for like improvements for security improvements, stuff like that would be included in that capital budget. Tara, would this fall under capital operational if we were to spend out of the fund balance for this? Okay. So then in that, then to go back to Travis's question, that would apply to some teacher salaries and certain things depending on how it's coded, correct? Okay. So there you go. Any other comments? The one thing I will say, um, I agree with Dr. Moody there. I certainly would not entertain three years. I don't think there's a need for it. Um, you know, the question we have is, I think this is something we've discussed as a board. How do we get more folks involved? How do we get more folks to uh, give us feedback? Um, and I think the idea of a town hall meeting, I like that. It was an idea I had a while back. The only downside is uh, I do worry that you don't get a lot of feedback. You don't get a lot of participation. Um, Andrew, do you remember, did they give us a percentage of, um, overall participation that they had before I wanted to say they told us like 15 percent but I don't know if I'm just pulling out of the air that seems correct when we talked earlier okay uh, that that was a good a good point of percentage for them okay so and again you can't guarantee that but if you could get 2,500 3,000 I mean and again it depends on how many people are responding at 140,000 people in the county so um, you could end up with a very large chunk of folks responding. I think in the, at minimally you get two, three, four thousand people, which is probably far more than you'll get at a board meeting or a town hall. Um, so that, that's just kind of my opinion. I think it is money that could be spent other places, but I think we could apply that to just about anything. So if we're going to look at something that affects the whole system, um, I think feedback is a good thing. D? I have two parts, really. The question, are we going to vote? On either or one year or three year first is that is that how the vote's going to be whoever makes a motion, motion there may be no motion so. um, since it seems that we may be leading leaning toward a one year my question to the I guess administration or whoever is do we since we're limited to only one topic do we know what direction we're going to go with that one topic just kind of one and done you know since it's a test or do we have any direction where we're going with that We've discussed several things that we would propose to the board. One would be the um, school day, the instructional school day, the time that students go to school. We would love to have a dialogue with the community about flipping, and we're going to present that in just a few minutes about high school's going later, elementary's going first, moving back the school day 30 minutes. That's a very dramatic thing for a school district to do. And we think there's great benefit to it, but it would be nice to have that discussion with the community before you voted on it. Um, so that's one that we would we would recommend. Um, the second one um, is, of course, long-range facility planning, Western Elementary. You know, what's the thoughts about that? Um, Knox Middle School, what's the thoughts about that? Safety and security, roofing. So facilities would be the second one. So we saw two questions that we thought in the long run could potentially save the school district a lot of money before you know, if you got the community's input before you proceeded and then you put in a change order for something. Chuck. Yeah, un unlike Aladdin, Aladdin's lamp, we only get one wish. We have to choose carefully. And the issues you brought up, uh, potential questions, 
to me it seems that they, although they're important, we can get enough feedback from the community and, and, and at a cost somewhat say less than 19,000, 20,000. And I'll also point out, keep in mind that if someone were to make a motion for either of these and that were to pass, we, uh, as far as determining what the topic would be, that, that's still that's still on the horizon. So this is not, uh, we haven't, it hasn't been decided and that would be something the board would have to come up with. Um, so any other comments or is there a motion at this time to do anything with this? Dr. Miller. I would make a motion that we do the 19,000 plus figure for a one-time uh, interaction with this. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed. Okay, five, four, two opposed. So we will move forward with the, um, the one-time um, what's the word I'm looking for? Engagement. engagement. There you go. The one time engagement, and then I guess we'll probably need to bring this back up for the next work session and we'll look at that. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Next item is the hot spots, and we'll turn that over to Miss Alexander. Good evening. Will you push that push that red button and just, that way you don't have to hold it? Okay. Thank you. Okay. And will you advance it for me? Thank you. <clears throat> um, well, we are very excited that uh, to report to you that we have um, over forty. Uh, sites. Uh, 20 of those sites um, are within the school system. Uh, your um, different uh, locations, which uh, you'll be able to go on the Hotspot website and see exactly. Uh, I did not prepare a list in this uh, proposal today um, or presentation. Uh, we also have. Um, 25 that would be considered a combination of uh, faith-based businesses and um, institutions. Uh, the Salisbury um, City uh, has about five at this point uh, and we're doing more. Those uh, right now uh, include all of our community centers. Uh, so that would be Miller, Park Avenue, um, uh, Hall Gym, uh, City Park, and the Civic Center. Uh, we intend to also include more uh, for the actual parks um, outside. So that would be, um, you know, City Park, Hurley Park. Um, we hope to, at some point, even have um, one at the community park, the really large park. Uh, we think that would be advantageous for children who uh, are participating with their siblings uh, in lots of different um, um, athletic um, things. And the brothers and sisters sometimes have to come while that's going on so they could do their homework at that point and advance it. Um, the... Um, what we're trying to do here is provide continuity and learning for the students from the classroom um, to after school, bridging the di digital divide by providing free Wi-Fi to students um, outside of school hours, uh, in the businesses and community centers, community parks and school media centers. So we have achieved that. We would like, our goal is to have 100 by a year, which would be in the fall. We started this uh, at the summit, basically. Um, we had about three or four months prior to that uh, in terms of planning it. Um, then we would like to provide access and encourage the use of district-supported online subscription services and eBooks. And I have a 
uh, later in the presentation, I have a list of those, and, and they are now posted on uh, the website. Um, Kelly Feimster has been in charge of that and has done a great job uh, with that. Uh, we're also um, doing online training, and also we just finished last week, uh, March 19th, at the Heritage Room. Uh, we had a educational um, seminar uh, for people who were already doing it and to find out what the issues were for some that wanted to do it. Um, so that ended up being a very productive um, evening. Um, we signed up for that afternoon. Um, we're hoping that um, the school system can use some Title I money to hire some teachers for ongoing after-school resource, not to be there all the time, but to be sort of floating so that some, particularly our faith-based uh, partners, they need that help. We do have now uh, a committed volunteer who is going to be available to our faith-based uh, groups to help them with the actual technology so that if they have problems with finding the right uh, supplier of that, particularly in, this, um, in the county uh, where there's not Fibrin available or Time Warner, uh, they would be able to uh, help them with this um, as a consultant. And he was there to discuss it with um, some of the people who signed up that evening. So you can go ahead. Um, and we made this very uh, flexible so that the partners could decide on when they were going to do it and what times. So we're covered just about every night of the week now. Um, each um, a site will sign a memorandum of understanding, which includes uh, that they're responsible for their Wi-Fi security, background checks, and liability insurance. So the school system will not have any liability in terms of that. Um, and we also had four of them sign those um, last week as well. Um, each site will keep records of the students who are attending to monitor the progress of the students. And each site will have a refreshment bar. I've said coffee, but, you know, depending on the, the age group, uh, some of them are focusing on uh, middle school and elementary school. Uh, Edgar uh, Esther Adkins is doing uh, partnering with the city of Salisbury's Park and Rec Center. She's doing at Miller Center um, a literacy program with the Wi-Fi uh, for elementary and at Hall Gym for middle school. So that's already up and going. Uh, we also um, have a lot of parents involved and some high school students um, who are in a leadership uh, group, and they include students from all of the high schools. Um, the current ones, as I said before, we have 20 sites that uh, are Rowan Salisbury Elementary Schools and Middle Schools. 16 are in the city of Salisbury. Three uh, sites are in Cleveland. China Grove has two sites. Spencer, Rockwell, East Spencer, and Mooresville each have one site, and then more sites are opening all the time. So we now that we have the um, Hotspots website up, we're actually updating that all of the time. So, go ahead. And these are some of the available resources to people who will sign the Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, they will be able to get to the Rowan uh, reads, tumble books, teaching books, Big Universe, Britannica Online, ebooks on Filet Shelf, Hotspot, um, the RowanHotspot.com, and we also are partnering with Rowan Public Library. And our committee is meeting ongoing. Uh, we meet uh, approximately once a month, and all of our partners come, and we find out um, how uh, that we can help each other. Uh, and what resources people don't have so that we can fill those gaps. So we're really excited about where it's going and how much um, activity we are having so far. And I think 
one more. And this is the logo. And um, when you are um, a hotspot partner, uh, you can put the name of your business or institution on there and your hours of operation and the days that it will be operated. And this is downloadable off of the website, so you don't have to pay for a logo or anything. You can just put it on there. Uh, we're actually preparing some for um, some of our partners who don't have access to the um, printers, and we're doing it with Klingon. So I've just ordered the Klingon so that you don't have to worry about getting it off later or whatever. So, And that's it for that one. Um, I did want to tell you, and I know that this isn't on your agenda, but I would like to come back and give you an update at some time uh, on Rowan Reads, which is another program that we are doing, which uh, we've started as of January 1st. We're providing a book and a DVD that was produced by the school system with um, David Wisnut as the announcer or the reader on that video um, CD and we're giving that to each new parent um, for their child uh, to encourage that they start reading at birth. So we're really excited about that. So that's we've already done about uh, 50 of those so far this year. Thank you very much for your time. Sure, you thank you. Questions? Are there any questions, comments? Dr. Miller? Karen, thank you for the leadership you've given to this. Um, what has been the biggest challenge in getting groups to sign on um, for the hotspots? I mean, 45, I think, is a great progress mm -hmm. where we are, but what's been the biggest challenge that your group, and is there any way we can uh, offer further assistance on that? I think that um, I would say the technology end of it, a lot of the churches have not had the uh, bandwidth. Uh, one of the things that the city of Salisbury is doing is um, if you uh, have Vibrant as your um, service in the city of Salisbury, then we will bump it up to the next level at no cost to that partner so that then, you know, with the added use of several students being there at their programs they don't get bumped off so uh, we are trying to find solutions the other was that a lot of them are not technologically sophisticated so they did need someone to help so I recruited uh, a um, computer guru that does work for my firm and he agreed to um, donate time to to this effort he has several children um, that are getting ready to start school so he's really and his wife is a teacher so uh, we're really thrilled but we've had wonderful um, success in people wanting to and I would like to challenge each one of you to um, you know get a couple of people in your districts um, we probably I would say the Kannapolis southern part of the the community would be an area that really does need we don't have it and also East Rowan so if any of you know anyone you know they can just call my office I'll meet with them uh, if it's in between when we have a meeting scheduled but we are trying to every quarter have a um, another information session and we plan on having uh, the next one centered around uh, actually the tutoring or helping them um, with any other issues that they bring. Uh, our last session, we kind of opened it up and just let everybody kind of talk. We had round tables, and that really turned out to be a great way of uh, engaging the people who were there. So thank you. Any other questions? Dr. Miller. Just one follow-up, Karen. Have we made any overtures then to the other width providers countywide to try to get them to um, follow the leadership that, that Salisbury has given to give extra bandwidth? Uh, uh, we, of the we have started that process. Um, we, um, I do have a meeting scheduled with AT&T, uh, which does provide for uh, certain areas in the city. Um, and Time Warner, um, I believe, will also help out. So we just don't know on what level So at this point, but we're working on it. So, Any other comments? No? Karen, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
The next two agenda items I think are pretty much tied together, the start and stop times, <clears throat> and also an update on Instructional Day Design Committee. So Dr. Moody, I think, will talk to us about both of those. I, um... I put in your package a memo and some notes about some of the work we've been done has been done. I've mentioned to you that um, at the last work session we talked about a lot of inconsistencies across the district about start and stop time, about the uh, amount of time that teachers work and are required to work, as well as when students go to school. And we've had a design committee working all year. Uh, off and on and Kelly Withers um, is back there Kelly has been chairing that design committee and we've got the names of the committee members that have been serving on that uh, mostly principals and um, uh, and one assistant principal looking at instructional time so we've looked at the the perimeters of the instructional time then we've been talking about what happens inside that instructional time and tomorrow at our administrative team meeting we have three principals presenting tomorrow talking about how to maximize instructional time inside that day so there's great variations inside the day outside the day we also know that we need to or we believe that we need to move the instructional day back 30 minutes for the entire district um, that instructional committee, and I'm sure that uh, Ms. Withers wouldn't mind speaking if you had a question to it, has had a lot of conversation about uh, when high schools start and the benefits of high schools starting at a later time, and there's a lot of research on that. So we would like to, um, we are still working, and at the next work session, what we were hoping to do is I define these goals what we'd like to do is to have those committees, and, and we've got another meeting um, this week or next week, I can't remember. Um, anyway, within the next week or two, before the next work session. And here was the goals we listed. Get consistent start times by grade level. So all of our elementaries would go at the same time, all of our middles would go at the same time, all of our high schools would go at the same time. Now, I'm gonna back up and say that's with one exception. Because of our buses, all of our elementary schools can't go at the same time, but if we could have them on an A, B, so half of them go at one time and the other 10 go at another time, but just get more consistent, not have 11 different start times, but have two start times for our elementaries. All of our middle would go at the same time, high school at the same time, with the exception of Henderson and early college. They may uh, have to go at a different time. And then uh, consistent work hours for our employees, <clears throat> what it is that we expect about what time they report to work and what time they leave work. There will always be a lot of variation from school to school about work hours because of IEP meetings and staff meetings and those things in addition to that, but get some standardization to the required work day. And then a later start time, as I mentioned, by 30 minutes. Some parameters about what happens inside the school day and then possibly flipping the high school and elementary start time. So our elementaries would start at 7.30 and our high schools would start at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, so we'll, we'll bring you a proposal at the next meeting. I just wanted to talk to you about our, our work at this point and, and I assured you that we would work on this piece and we've been working on this piece, but it is a conversation that would like for you to go ahead and begin with the community about what they think about those things because we will be asking you, we'll, we'll make a recommendation and we'll, we'll be asking you to move ahead and vote on that in the near future. Any questions or comments? Travis. Just a con concern about the elementary start times. Do most of our elementaries kind of start right now around the eight o'clock at time, give or take? I know you say we got like a, so many different ones and I know buses start rolling out at six in the morning that's going to roll them out at 5:30 in the morning. When's our when's our buses leave? I just would They're worry. Actually, I think leave now at 5:30. I believe that part of this is trying to. For, back I'm talking that elementary up. buses. Mm -hmm. That would back that up even further. I, I that that would be my only reservation with the the. That just seems like a brutal time to be standing out in the dark on the side of the road for an elementary kid so early in the morning. Right now, we do our buses start rolling at 5:30. 
Okay, so, um, and they are basically picking up high school students, you know, at 530 in the morning. And what we were trying to get to is that we wouldn't send any buses out for any grade level until 6. We think we could have a 730 start time for elementary, and it is a variety. So, yes, while there's a few that start at 8, there's some that start at 830, there's some that start at 730 already. Um, so elementary would start basically at probably 7.30, and then another group would start at 8 o'clock, but no one would get on a bus before 6 o'clock in the morning. Chuck? Yeah, yeah that was my concern also, particularly they like savings time. I mentioned this, I think, the last meeting. These children are waiting out there in the dark and the cold, as it is, and now we're back, in the bu back another half an hour early. And what would your uh, end of day time be? Half an hour earlier, is that what you're saying? Well, we'd start we'd start everything 30 minutes later. So we we already have children that are out at 5:30 catching the bus in the morning. I mean, currently that's what we have. They just have to be high school students instead of elementary students. Big difference, though. Big difference. So you, the, 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 the end of school would, would be what time? If you start at 7:30, oh, it would be half an hour earlier. Right, so they would, so they'd get out a half an hour early. It w wouldn't change the instructional time within that day. Okay. Susan, this may be a question you can't answer, but how many elementary school students—and I don't mean to the number, but a percentage—actually stand outside to wait for a bus? Because I see a lot of those children waiting inside, and when the bus comes, they come to the bus. Well, that's a good question. We have more car riders, you know, at that, that level. Um, but one of the things about um, this that we're working on, too, this is just an additional piece to this. Um, we're trying to configure now. We're not sure we can completely pull this off, and I don't know whose great idea it was. But it looks like that there's a possibility that our buses all have a, um, um, a GPS on them. So what we're trying to do is develop an app so that our parents can actually see where the bus is at. So they would know exactly when it was coming up to their door. They could follow and track the bus right to their front door. So they would know when, the like two minutes before the child needs to come outside, there's their bus. Now, obviously, they got to have cell phone. they got to have Internet access. I mean, you know, there's some problems with it. It's not perfect, but it would give parents more information. Chuck. Yeah, just one other question. Uh, what is the goal of this, setting it uh, back a half an hour? Uh, if we want consistency, we could do consistency at 8 o'clock, I would think. But there must be some other important reason for it. Well, there's a couple of goals with this. Um, one of them, in moving it back a half an hour, is we, we didn't feel like that it was good for any student at 5.30 in the morning. 6 o'clock seems like the earliest any child should be getting on a bus, no matter what your age is. Uh, all of the research will tell you that high school students go to bed a lot later, and they are not, um, if you've ever taught high school, uh, you'll know that they don't wake up until about 10 o'clock in the morning. So they're going to school the earliest, and their biological clocks are not in sync. So first period, and, and I really should let high school principals speak to this. Um, the research tells you the later in the day high school students start, the, the more it's more instructionally sound for high school students. Elementary students are exactly the opposite, but we have our schedules flipped, in my opinion. Um, elementary students are more attentive early in the morning, and they fade out after lunch. So we don't get much out of elementary students after they hit a big lunch. High school students don't really get wound up till lunchtime. Uh, so we want the high school day to be later, the elementary day to start earlier because it's it's good for instruction. If we're running schools based on good for instruction, also most parents drop off at the elementary school. High school students, a variety of them, drive to school. Elementary students are typically dropped off. If a parent goes to work at 8 o'clock, it's more conducive to drop their child off at 7.30 if they have to be at work at 8 o'clock. So if you're going to look at custodial issues, it also seems like it's the best idea to have elementary start before high school does in the day. So those are the things that we're trying to address. Dean. Uh, not to point out semantics, but I, I don't think you all are on the same page because you keep saying move back 
but you're meaning move forward as in later start time. Yep, and she was saying some schools, some, yeah, look, it, and if you read it, it says forward, like so later start time. So it's not moving back, moving forward 30 minutes. And some yeah, elementary schools are already at 730 and some are at eight. So if you were more consistent in half and half, some could be 730, some could be eight. I hope that cleared up. And you just wasted yeah, a lot we, of your time. We were not on the same page. When you said move back, I'm thinking just the opposite. Okay, thank you. Travis. Just for uh, curiosity's sake, and I, so we can, and I agree with a comment you had made in a, some of our previous meetings, is adding actual instructional time for the day. Does this help accomplish any of that, or that where we can have a few more minutes for more instruction like we were wanting? And also, what, what does the uh, high school end times look like? Just curious with a nine o'clock start. What would they eat four ish? Is that about right, Kelly? I'm looking at Kelly, three thirty, four o'clock. Um it, you know, I can't remember what I've told y'all and what I haven't told you. Southeast Middle School, for example, when we started running buses, they go an hour earlier than every middle school in the district because I guess they were the last school built. So when they started running buses, they just they couldn't get them in the schedule. So they go an hour. They have two hours in the afternoon from when school lets out to when athletics start that they have to have supervision. So their teachers have to work longer because they have to supervise those children who are, go to athletics that they have nowhere to go for an hour where the other schools have gotten out an hour later. So that consistency will help with those kinds of things. But the school day itself will not be any, we're not, we're not going to make the school day itself, or this is not the plans, any longer. But we're going to take what's inside that school day and tighten it up a little bit, particularly at the elementary level. Any other questions? Chuck. Tighten it up, uh, tighten it up a little. Uh, are we talking about the 10 minutes, doing away with that? That's not no, sir. It would still be the same amount of time that we are currently going with the 10 minutes already that we've already added. Yes, sir. And I think just for clarity, I think she's referencing and we talked about this, I think, a little last time. For example, basically the way some of the classrooms run, I think there are some classrooms and some teachers that probably could do things a little differently, maybe a little more effectively and consider that instructional time. So I think that's what she's referencing with bathroom breaks for elementary, just the way they structure those things. So. Anything else on that? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Moody. Next, Dr. Morrow. She'll talk to us about Grow Your Own Leaders, which we've heard about a little bit already. Good evening. Good evening. So, as you know, um, we have started in... Um, we formed a committee, a design committee, back in the fall um, in regards to a Grow Your Own Leaders program. Um, we determined that if we're really going to grow our leaders in this, in our district, um, you know, we've had a lot of principalships and a lot of uh, opportunity to hire new principalships and hire new assistant principals, and we wanted to provide the opportunity um, to develop our own leadership program um, so we have a group of principals and um, administrators other administrators within the district um, that formed a design committee and we've been planning this again since the fall um, as you can see this quote here leadership and learning are indispensable of each other and if you really think about that if we really are going to promote leaders and grow leaders we have to provide them with learning opportunities and so pretty much that's the design of the program if um, so this program was designed um, to provide ongoing and really when I say intensive professional development um, I think a few, it, it will be intensive. Even the application process was intensive um, and the interview process. And I'll get into that in just a second. But we're really looking to, for those assistant principals who are wanting to aspire to be principals, to be, to grow into, um, into other leadership roles and uh, beyond just the assistant principal, but to continue or even just to develop as an assistant principal. Uh, we want to provide that opportunity for them. Um, so this, again, is profes uh, intensive professional development uh, for those assistant 
uh, principals that are seeking those leadership opportunities. So who are these leaders? Um, they are truly the best of the best. Um, we had, um, we offered this opportunity to every assistant principal in our district. Um, an email was sent to every assistant principal in the district and then um, we had um, 18 to apply. Uh, from that, uh, we chose a group to interview. Um, now, the application process was very intensive. Um, they had to, uh, it wasn't just fill out your name and say you wanted to apply. There was a series of questions that the design team ha um, created. Um, and it was really to kind of go through and, and to say, this is why I want to be in this program. Um, and then from that, um, they had to go through um, an interview process, and it was a 20-minute uh, interview. And uh, some of our candidates are here tonight, and they'll tell you that this process was very intense and they had to actually uh, create, they were given a scenario and they had to create a presentation and present to the committee and they had five minutes and we set a timer and they had stopped. Some of them realized that creating a five minute presentation is much more difficult than creating an hour presentation. Um, so they presented and then we uh, hammered them with some questions uh, for the, the remaining 15 minutes. So from that, we were able, we selected nine candidates. Um, so with that, um, they were, again, that's kind of the process. One of, some of the things that we were looking for are some of the things that you see up here, that they showed us that they were visionary leaders, um, that they um, really were looking to grow and to develop as a leader, that they were, had that inspirational, they could look beyond and they could see the big picture. Um, we want to develop them, and we want to develop some of those skills. Um, the service piece, um, the willingness and the desire to learn and to grow, so that's part of the piece. Now, when does this start? It starts tomorrow. So actually, they received homework over the weekend. Um, right now, we have three books they will be participating in, uh, that they'll be reading. Um, one is Mindsets, which is going to be a book that we're using in the district. Another is Leveraging Leaderships, which our principals are currently using. And the other one is the QBQ, the question behind the question, which is the book that we're using. So all three of these are intertwined with things that we're already doing within the district. Um, we will meet every six weeks, and we will be meeting for three-hour periods at that time. Um, our team, our design team, will be uh, creating the opportunities every six weeks for us to develop these leadership skills and to prepare them for the principalship. Um, I've already hit up different members. Um, April, I hit her up this morning. I said, okay, now you need to go ahead and get prepared because you need to, uh, you will be providing, you know, some professional development on legal aspects. And um, we are planning on taking this uh, group on a um, trip. Um, to visit some schools um, so that they can also see some extraordinary leadership and, and um, see that in action. So again, what they're going to be participating in, we talked a little bit about it, but they'll be doing um, seminars, uh, panels. We'll have panels of guest speakers coming in and talking with them. Um, they'll be developing um, mentorships with not just principals, but also business leaders. Um, we're going to immerse them in, in retreats. Um, they'll have opportunities also to practice their interviewing skills and to design resumes, and we'll be doing some of that, but that'll be later on. They will also be responsible for creating a research project uh, for the district, and they tomorrow, they that's part of their homework, they will go home and they will begin to think about what it is. Their first assignment, I'm telling for the back of them, they're in the back, they can go home and start reading tonight, um, but they'll be responsible for reading half the book of Mindset and just developing, so it's pretty intense and that was in the application process. Um, so we're very excited about this opportunity and very excited to be able to um, grow, to truly grow our own leaders. Questions? Yes. Chuck. Yeah, this is, uh, you get used to this microphone. Uh, how will this be documented into these individuals' records for mm -hmm. future acknowledgement? Uh, it's a lot of energy putting in there. It is. And unfortunately, they couldn't all probably become principals at one of our schools. Or 
Where? That d down the road they may Never they know. may have calling, mm -hmm. and how will, how will this be documented that they can show this 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 uh, extra work they put in extra uh, achievements? I think it's about the opportunity to learn and to develop and this is kind of an intrinsic piece as well that you have to have that desire and willingness that you want to learn um, to become a leader and I'm not sure that I'm answering your question but the documentation piece too would be just a piece I mean you know they'll have that on their resume that they were chosen they were selected to be a part of that cohort um, and so and then they'll again they'll have their project and they'll be participating in some leadership opportunities within the district as well which then leads them to another spot to say, hey, you know, this is another piece for me to grow as a leader and to have on my resume to say, yes, this is the next step to empower them as a leader. Right. It's really an achievement and I appreciate your efforts on it. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm excited about the opportunity. I really am. So, and I probably will be asking some of you to go. <laughs> other questions? Any other comments? Travis? I love it. <coughs> I, I, I think it does more than just develop your leaders. I think it's a massive boost for morale. Mm -hmm. When you when you have an administration that recognizes your hard work, recognizes your talent, and develops that, it, it's amazing. I would like to see it even filter down eventually. I know we don't, you have to have manpower and staffing, but for teachers that want, uh, lead teachers that one day would want to be assistant principals, mm -hmm. it gives, it, I think it speaks more than financial compensation to be recognized for the your talent and skills, I think it, it speaks volumes. I love it. Absolutely, and that's one thing that actually Andrew and I had a conversation this afternoon about some ways that we can begin to grow our teachers in the district and empower them. Um, I would like to see this as the next step of the Grow, the, the grow Your Own Leader design team as that we do some leadership programs for our teachers and we began that as well because um, I do think it's a, a great program and a great way to recognize some of our tremendous leadership in this district. So thank you. Now, is, what's the method, like, say we have two or three that take principalships, mm -hmm. is this going to just revolve into another group coming in eventually? It, there will be a new group. This is a year-long program, so yes, there will be another group that will start again in the spring, so we will continue. You know, my dream is, is that this is a program that just continues to grow, and we just continue to develop more and more leaders for our district. Susan. And I've heard several times people saying, well, I came to Roanne Salisbury because we heard what you're doing and it's so exciting. And I just see this as another piece it for is. a recruitment tool to get teachers and, and administrators to come to our district. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Miller. I guess you need to help an old man here <laughs> because for me, there's a disconnect between the number of times you use the word intense program mm -hmm. and an every six week meeting. Mm -hmm. The frequency doesn't seem to support that, the intensity. at least in my, in my thinking. They will have a lot of homework to do between the two. The reason that we didn't is because we were trying to limit the amount of time. That, because they will be from 2 until 5 um, every 6 weeks. And the reason we said 6 weeks was just so that they weren't out of the building as much. So, But they will have a lot of homework, and we'll be doing a lot of um, – interactive meetings, um, blogging, different opportunities. So it's face-to-face, -face, I should say, face-to-face -face meetings and opportunities. Dr. Moody. Uh, we are really excited about the program. We're really excited about the candidates who came forward. Um, I've had this question already. Does this guarantee that they get to be a principal? Or will you hire anybody from the outside? Or uh, do they have an edge over other people in the school district about getting a principalship? And let me just tell you that there are a number of assistant principals who did not apply for the program because they're working on their doctorate right now. So they were already in an intense program, and they didn't think they could do both, and they're right. They probably could not do both. It would be very difficult to pull off both of those at one time. So we've tried to be clear from the beginning. It gives them a distinct competitive edge. When you have a strong Grow Your Own program, when they interview for the job, they know the answers <laughs> for the interview, where other people don't because they just haven't been through the same experience. For example, often in the interview process, our assistant principals are very weak on the financial piece. 
because they just hadn't done it. They don't have any exposure to it. They haven't learned that piece. So Tara has a big part with this Grow Your Own leaders to get them really ready for it. So I think you'll see when the Grow Your Own program is over, we will be hiring more people internally and less people externally because the external people can't compete with our own. But it doesn't mean that we won't or we won't hire somebody who hasn't been through the program. They might be working on their doctorate and they get it. Um, it doesn't exclude them, but it's one more piece. Just Dr. Moore. one more comment. One of the things that we discovered throughout the interview process and the application process were some opportunities that we can provide professional development for all of our assistant principals in the district. Um, and so we've already begun that process too of designing professional development that would enable, all, you know, that really would provide some um, extension, or just again, professional development and professional growth for all of our assistant principals. Um, and this opportunity really opened those doors and helped us to see where do we need to continue to grow, grow our, our other leaders in the district. Any other comments or questions? I will just say thank you and thank, uh, thanks to the staff. I think, you know, so often there are things we, we want to do that we can't do for staff. Um, and I think we'll, can, we'll always be there on some level. Uh, but it, it uh, truly amazes me. We have so much going on right now, and our staff, teachers up, are asked to do so much. But yet it seems like there's continually something that our, our administrators particularly are trying to roll out, trying to put in place, trying to uh, offer as an incentive. Uh, and, and that's a huge benefit. So thank you for this very much. Thank you. Dr. Moody. I'm sorry, I just need to tell you one more thing because we're talking about staff and growing leaders. Um, I failed to mention to you earlier on Thursday, we are really excited about, we purchased the book, Question Behind the Question, which is about personal responsibility for all of our support staff in the district, our um, uh, receptionist, our financial secretaries at the school and at the district office. And on Wednesday, you know, we invite you to join us if you'd like. Um, we're going to be doing that book study with Thursday. each of them, excuse me, Thursday at 11.30 at the Hurley Y. And so they're going to, it's about personal responsibility. We realize that they're the front lines of our schools and our offices, and they don't really know our strategic plan. So each one of us are going to walk them through the pieces of the strategic plan so that they can talk to parents or other members about it. Then they're going to talk about their book study at their table. We're going to provide lunch for them. Um, um, as a treat for them and then they're going to wrap up with their own individual action plan about how they can help us move the strategic plan in their individual building so that's thursday from 11 30 to 1 30 at the hurley y and again it's a training session for um, our support staff well we all invited to that Sorry, especially you would like to go yeah. <laughs> hurley y he's always spoke for the old man I think they'd greatly appreciate it if you could come. They would love seeing you and having a dialogue with you. Okay, if there's nothing else, we've, I've been asked that we take a short break, so we're going to do a 10-minute recess and come back. Okay, thank you.